Um, the, I think the, the goal of the courses, and all three of them was, uh, was unique to the course, and the ePortfolio is very aligned to that. In the 200 course, in Arbus 200, our goal was to expand and to um, talk about strategy. It was early on in our careers. We were only starting second year. Um, and I think the goal was for us to look beyond a course and look all the way to graduation and see what we were going to do, what our strategy was going to be. And the goal in 300 was more to see if we were prepared as entrepreneurs to, to execute that strategy. And now in 400, it's what are we going to do now beyond university? And I think the way that the ePortfolio helped was the same in all three. It was forcing us to kind of look at it and, and evaluate it. It's something that we don't necessarily voluntarily sit down and think about. And forcing a second year student to look beyond a course and look beyond the, the regular schedule. Um, forcing a third year student to kind of scrutinize themselves and see, am I really ready or, or am I not, not waiting for an employer to say that in an interview. And forcing a fourth year student to look beyond graduation and what am I going to do afterwards instead of just getting the first job that comes around. That, that forcing you to reflect, I think, was, the, was what really helped in all three um, courses for the portfolio. Um, well, for the first time that I encountered the ePortfolio, there were really no expectations. We weren't really sure what it was about and what we were doing. Um, it was an interesting exercise, but I can't say that I was fully aware of how it was helping me. I was just kind of going with it and, and, and just doing for an assignment uh, sort of thing. For the 300 I, and, and 400, I was more prepared and I knew what to expect. Um, and I think I was fully aware of how it helped me by the 300 one when I started asking myself questions and then I looked back at my resume and I wasn't completely happy with it. And um, just trying to fill each of the components of the ePortfolio and trying to fill all the requirements, I started realizing, well, I'm asking myself uncomfortable questions that I wouldn't necessarily voluntarily do. And, and the same experience for 400. It was, it was more of a conscious reflection than, than just filling it up for the assignment. I think the ePortfolio is, is the way that the course goes beyond itself and sort of transcends the, the limits of, of what a course would be. Um, so I think I would have probably learned the same thing about the course, but I wouldn't necessarily have learned as much about myself or as much about my career or as much about everything off kind of off campus that we're that we're trying to learn. So yeah, I mean academically I don't think it's it's integral to the to the course itself, but I think it's an it's a way to attach a component to the course that goes beyond academics and go into my own life and my career. The 300 uh, Arvis 300 was particularly a good experience in terms of that. Uh, we had ex exercises asking, um, practicing interview questions, not necessarily interview specific, like job specific questions, but more what are your failures and how are you going to overcome them, which is a really elusive question that nobody really wants to answer. And um, I remember watching a video in class about, about the interview. I remember watching a video about how to prepare for questions like that. And then our professor also has a lot of experience um, asking questions like that in interviews, and he was giving us answers as to what to say and what not to say, what do employers mean when they say that. And then we had to take that um, lecture material and then apply it to ourselves in the form of, of some artifact on the ePortfolio. So what I, I remember doing just a reflection, like a written re reflection on it, but what I realized was that I was not interpret like interpreting the question well. When the in when the employer would come at me and say, "Well, um, what are your weaknesses? What's your major weakness, and what are you going to do about it?" I thought, I I mean, it's it's kind of the question that you don't know how to answer because if you if you sound too arrogant or if you sound like a loser, they're not going to hire you. So you don't know. So having the practice and understanding for us, it was understanding that they were trying to observe how we kind of look into ourselves and, and say, okay, this is something that I have to get better at and that we already have a plan instilled for it. So doing that exercise in the ePortfolio is like, oh, okay, I already have the answer ready. So next time I find that in an interview, then I don't have to fret over, am I being too arrogant or am I being too, um, like, am I underestimating myself sort of thing.
Well, technical, uh, I, I do have a minor in fine arts, and I have a much stronger background in fine arts than what a minor usually says. Um, so for me, like doing the e-portfolio was, it was very important for me to, for the e-portfolio to be aesthetically appealing, for it to be organized, for it to incorporate different media, and for everything to sort of be cohesive. Um, so I enjoyed that part. I enjoyed not having to write an assignment. That would have taken me like a million words. and. <laughs> And I did not want to write a million words. Um, so I think it allows for students of different, of different kinds of learning to express themselves in whatever way they see fit. Some people are better at, at speaking or at addressing something in video or, or at writing than they are in any other media. Some people can say and express things with images that they can't really describe in words. And I feel like traditionally assignments are fit for one medium. And if you can't work with that, then you're out of luck. Whereas in this assignment, we were able to work with whatever was our strength. And if that was pictures, then there's a lot of e-portfolios that I've seen that are mostly pictures. And, and the, the reflections are kept really short. Whereas there's a lot of other e-portfolios that I've seen where people have a lot of video and that way they can just talk, which they feel more comfortable with. So it's more tailored to the learning, I guess the learning style of every student. I had in my past e-portfolio, I, I had an image for my banner. Um, it was some penguins plunging in the water. And for me, it was, it was very telling uh, because what I wanted to say was that the Arbus 300, um, it, well, the course in general, was geared towards us taking the plunge and us being professional and sort of leaping into our, our career. And it was really cheesy saying that in words. <laughs> Whereas putting it in an image, it's, it's a little bit more subtle and it's a little bit more telling. And it's something that fit nicely aesthetically into my e-portfolio. And I didn't have to necessarily say that out loud for, for whoever was looking to, in, to interpret that. So I thought, I thought that was uh, a useful way. And that was just one picture I didn't have to necessarily go into explanations for. Everybody has their own style of doing things, but sometimes it pushes you. I mean, one of my teammates for this for this term did a ridiculously fantastic job in her e-portfolio. She spent ever since like January first on it, and it was really important for her because she was she's looking for a job and she already has an interview with the employer, and so the e-portfolio was for her a way to materialize everything that she wanted to say. So I think that motivation made her like really go go into the e-portfolio with a lot of material and sort of really dedicate to it. And I think she, like her showing her e-portfolio to everyone on the team, was like, okay, we got to get her game on because she, I mean, she's doing such a good job. We can't, like, if that's the mark, then we have to, then we have to like enhance what we're doing um, so that we can at least be on par with, <laughs> with that sort of thing. So sometimes it's that, sometimes it's about push from, from your classmates um, and, and you want to be, you want to make as much effort as they are in your e-portfolio. Sometimes it's an entirely different direction that people take and whether you're incorporated or not, it's nice to know. Um, as a specific example, most of the people that I looked at for 400, most of the e-portfolios were more geared towards the professional me I'm um, still coming from 300 and, and sort of what I'm going to do about work. Whereas I wanted to take more of a, the personal me direction. And even though my profession is in there, I wanted to keep it as about me as a whole person. And so being aware that I was taking a different direction, then I'm able to decide whether I want to change my direction or whether I'm happy where I am. And I just have to sort of justify why I did that. I think perhaps not in the same platform and in the same structure, but I think um, it's something that I learned from my experience in fine arts keeping a, keeping a fine arts journal. That's something that we also had as a requirement there. And then in business keeping my e-portfolio, I learned the value of just keeping a log with, with your reflections and what you think. So I think in some sort of way, I'm gonna keep a, a file with what I think have been my greatest achievements and what I think I have. Um, I have done better or I have reflected on. Uh, one of the reasons why, and this is something I included in my portfolio reflections for this year, was that 
My instructor um, for fine arts, she said, when you are like 20 years old and you're in, in art school, you're great. Like you can't stop thinking about ideas and you rarely have the money, the time, or the willingness to materialize them. And then you turn 40 and then there's no ideas and you have time, money, and effort and you have willingness, but you have no ideas. So it's nice to keep some sort of idea back that you can refer back to. Um, and that really touched me when she said that because it's something that I have found sometimes even like by the moment, sometimes I can't stop thinking about ideas and then later on I am starved for them. So I think in some way I'm gonna keep a lot of what I think my goals would be or what projects I would like to um, incur, what, what kind of achievements I've already had that I want to um, highlight because that's another thing, you rarely remember what you're good at sometimes. <laughs>